Okay guys, here we go. I know many of you have been waiting for this one. Today we're going to cover the best way to coil every type of weapon in Forbidden West. With 8 weapon categories, numerous ammo types, and dozens of different coils to choose from, it can be pretty overwhelming to figure out which coils you should be using on which weapon. Making this even more complicated is the fact that we have limited quantities of many coils, especially some of the best ones, so we really have to think about which weapon we want to commit certain coils to. If that wasn't enough, some of the coil mechanics also aren't very clear. For example, many people have asked me how exactly agility coils work. I'll answer that question and more in this video, but before we get started, I just want to say that of course there's no single best way to coil every weapon. Some weapons do have clearer choices than others, but ultimately the coils you pick really depend on your playstyle, which weapons you like to use, and how you like to use them. So what I'm going to do is show you my top coil recommendations for each weapon type, but then I'll also show you some alternatives to give you some options. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I'll show you my current endgame loadout and all the coils I'm using on each weapon. Now even with all the options I'll show you, I'm sure some of you are still going to have strong opinions and disagree with some of my choices, and that's okay. I'd love to hear what you think the best coil sets are, so totally leave me a comment about that down below. But right now, we have a ton to cover, so let's go. Up first, let's figure out your hunter bow, specifically the hunter bow you use to deal impact and tear damage. Generally, when deciding to coil a weapon, I first ask myself what the weapon is especially good at. Taking a look at hunter bows, we can see that the tear damage set on every single hunter bow is much higher than the impact damage. So this is the game telling us that hunter bows are best at tearing off components, not dealing direct damage. Now, evaluating a weapon this way may cause you to rethink how you use it in combat. For example, many of us, myself included, got used to using a hunter bow for dealing damage in Zero Dawn, and that habit carried over to Forbidden West. However, as soon as I realized hunter bows are focused on tear damage in Forbidden West, I shifted my playstyle to leverage that aspect of the weapon. Other factors I consider when coiling a weapon include what perks it has, how I personally like to use it in combat, and the mechanics of the weapon, like its draw speed or its critical hit chance. By the way, you can find each type of weapon's critical hit chance stats by going into the tutorials area of the menu and heading into attacking, weapon boosts, and finally critical hits. So because hunter bows are particularly good at dealing tear damage, boosting that stat as much as possible is a great idea. Now the obvious choice would be tear damage coils, but there's actually a much better coil for boosting tear damage. Component tear damage coils, which come in 15% blue and 25% purple versions, can deal more tear damage than regular tear coils, which only come in blue 10% and purple 12% versions. The only catch here is that the tear damage boost on component tear coils is limited to components, but that really isn't much of a drawback. You're only missing out on being able to tear off armor plates more easily, which is something you rarely need to do anyway, so I think component tear coils are the best choice. By the way, if you want to know where to get all the coils we're going to talk about, I'll link my video down below where I show the coil location spreadsheet I made. For example, you can use the spreadsheet to see that the blue 15% component tear coils are for sale in Hidden Ember and at the Dig Site Merchant, who, by the way, is actually missable, so make sure you buy coils from him before entering the tomb. Thanks to Robobunny for sending me this clip by the way because I actually did miss this myself on my first playthrough. Now unfortunately, some coils can only be obtained by looting machines killed during quests. For example, the purple 25% component tear comes from a machine in the Seeds of the Past quest and can't be found anywhere else. So on any single playthrough, you can only get one. However, you'll be able to get another one when playing New Game Plus, so it's worth keeping that in mind. I'll soon be adding a tab to my coil spreadsheet to show all the quest machine coils, so definitely go check out my coils video after finishing this one. Anyway, back to coiling your hunter bow. I recommend loading it up with at least two to three component tear coils. You could even fill every slot with component tear if you want, but for a little extra versatility, I think it's a good idea to use one to two overdraw damage coils, which boost impact, tear, and elemental buildup each time you overdraw your bow. You could also use agility or concentration coils for the same purpose. And if you don't have component tear coils yet, then regular tear coils can be a good holdover. Just remember that even the blue component tear coils are better than the purple regular ones. Now let's talk about your elemental hunter bow, for example the seeker hunter bow or the sun scorch. And let's be honest here, this bow is really used primarily for dealing frost damage, so my coil recommendation here is very easy. You simply want to load it up with as many frost coils as you can to increase the frost buildup stat, making it much easier to freeze machines into the brittle state. The optimal coil set would be all purple 15% frost coils, but if you don't have 5 of them yet for the sun scorch, then the blue 12% ones are still a solid choice until you can get more purple ones. Up next we have the sharp shot bow, which is one of the more complicated weapons to coil because we have so many options. I know my top choice here is going to be controversial, but I really feel that critical hit chance coils, specifically the purple 15% versions, are a smart choice. That's because sharp shot bows have the highest built-in critical hit damage multiplier of any weapon, clocking in at 2.5. Imagine you could get a coil that was 150% impact damage. That's basically what the critical hit multiplier is, and with the high impact damage stats precision arrows already have, we really want to leverage that huge crit multiplier. 
To do that, we need to go all in on boosting the critical hit chance, which is why I load my sharp shot bows with three 15% critical hit chance coils. Together they add up to 45%, plus sharp shot bows have a built-in critical hit chance of 5%, so in total we're at a 50% critical hit chance. Basically, that means on average, half our shots will be critical hits that deal 2.5 times the normal damage. Now with New Game Plus, you could get more critical hit chance coils and boost the chance all the way up to 80%, but I feel that 50% is a good balance, especially since you can use the critical boost Valor Surge to give yourself an additional 55% crit chance, literally guaranteeing a critical hit on every shot. If you're going to go for this build, for the remaining two slots on the Legendary, I recommend using long range damage coils, which come in either 15 or 25% versions. Now, there are equally powerful high ground and stealth damage coils, which are also good choices for a sharp shot bow, but they're more situational than long range coils, which only require that you're 30 meters from the target. This is what 30 meters looks like, so you can see you'll often be at least this far from your target when using a sharp shot bow anyway. In addition to the stealth and high ground damage coils, another alternative you could consider are the 100% sharp shot tear damage coils. Now these are very specialized but also very powerful. With two of them loaded on a bow, you'll be able to tear off pretty much any component in just one or two shots even on ultra hard, which is very handy for farming components like thunderjaw tails. Okay, let's move on to bolt blasters. If you aren't already using a bolt blaster with a sustained burst weapon technique to deal raw damage, then I would highly recommend you give it a try. I use this technique all the time and it's what drives my recommendation that you prioritize impact damage coils on your bolt blaster. With such a high fire rate, especially when using sustain burst, even a small increase in the damage to each bolt adds up to a big difference in the overall DPS of the bolt blaster. Loading up 5 impact damage coils would be perfectly reasonable, but on my blast forge I actually like to use one slot for a 25% reload speed coil so I can reload mid fight for another sustain burst more easily. If you don't want to use impact damage coils on your bolt blaster then you have a few other options. You could consider critical hit chance coils. Bolt blasters have a 2 times crit damage multiplier, and each bolt has a chance to be a crit, so the extra damage can really add up. Unfortunately, it's not possible to get crits while doing a sustained burst, so the crit chance coils will only help you when using regular bolt blaster shots. Close range damage coils can also be very strong on a bolt blaster, but only if you're daring enough to get up close and personal with the machines you're fighting since you have to be within 10 meters for these coils to work. Other alternatives include concentration damage, which is very easy to trigger by simply being in the concentration state or more reload speed coils if you want to reload even faster. Spike throwers have a few options as well. The obvious one, and the one that I think will make sense for most spike thrower fans, is to load up as many explosive damage coils as possible. The most powerful way to use a spike thrower is with the splitting spike weapon technique, and explosive damage coils do indeed boost the damage of the split spikes, making it even more powerful. So explosive damage coils are a pretty simple recommendation if all you use is explosive spikes. But if you're like me, then you're actually a bigger fan of drill spikes. Drill spikes are particularly good for triggering knockdowns, which is a handy mechanic for stunning machines, as I showed in my Slitherfang hunting video. So I actually use a spike thrower like the Vindicator or Spinethorn loaded up with knockdown power coils so I can trigger knockdowns as fast as possible. If you want to give drill spikes a try, other options you could consider are damage over time coils, which will boost the amount of damage each drill tick does, and knockdown damage coils, which increase damage while a machine is in the knockdown state. But I think the knockdown power coils are the most useful. By the way guys, if you enjoyed these types of guide videos, leaving a like to let me know that would be awesome and it also really helps out small channels like mine. Okay, now let's talk about coiling my favorite weapon, Shredder Gauntlets. Shredders have become my primary weapon for taking down many machines because they're very resource efficient and they can deal large amounts of tear damage to rip off components, which in turn deals a lot of damage to the machine's health. My goal with coiling a Shredder is to boost the impact, tear, and elemental buildup damage on every throw, so we need coils that boost all of those. The best coils for this are purple 15% Agility Coils. Now Agility Coils work by boosting damage if the projection is released while falling or sliding. You don't need to be falling or sliding while the ammo hits the target or the whole time it's in the air, you just have to be falling or sliding when it's released from the weapon, which makes using agility coils relatively easy. The other benefit of agility coils is that they boost all damage types, including impact, tear, and elemental buildup. So with elemental shredders like shock shredders, we get to benefit from all of those. Unfortunately, there's only three purple 15% agility coils in any single playthrough, so for our legendary ancestor's return, we need to figure out additional coils. You could simply load up a few blue 10% agility coils and call it a day. You could also consider using concentration damage coils, which, like agility coils, also boost impact tear and elemental buildup. However, I prefer to use 25% damage over time coils to boost the damage dealt by the shredder as it grinds into a machine. Alternatively, a shock coil or two can be useful on the Ancestor's Return before you're able to fully upgrade it for better shock buildup. If you want to learn more about how to use shredders, I linked my Shredder Gauntlet Masterclass video down below. Alright, now let's cover warrior bows. Once again, we have a few 
few options here depending on your playstyle and which coils you've already committed to other weapons. The simplest coil set for a warrior bow is to load it up with impact damage coils. You'll want to use your warrior bow with the spread shot weapon technique to shoot 5 arrows at once. Even though each individual light arrow deals relatively little damage, the impact damage boost being applied to all of them really adds up. You could also use critical hit chance coils to increase the chance of getting critical hits. Similar to a bolt blaster, this can work well on a warrior bow because of the high fire rate. Warrior bows have a 2 times crit damage multiplier, so using crit chance coils can be pretty effective. However, my favorite coils for a warrior bow are actually melee follow-up coils. These increase damage for a brief period of time after landing a melee hit with your spear, so the strategy is to simply smack a machine somewhere quickly with the spear and then quickly fire off as many spread shots as possible. This is particularly powerful on the Karja's Bane because it has a 40% melee boost built in when fully upgraded. With 3 purple 25% and 2 blue 15% coils, we can bring the total up to a whopping 145%. In other words, we can deal almost 2.5 times damage simply by smacking a machine first. If you want some truly insane damage output, then make sure you freeze the machine into the brittle state first and you'll be shocked at how much damage you can deal with a warrior bow. Moving on to blastlings, we have the obvious choice of using explosive damage coils similar to a spike thrower. There's certainly nothing wrong with coiling it that way if you like dealing damage with a blastling, but personally I think it's better to leverage explosive bombs higher inherent knockdown power by using knockdown power coils. Similar to drill spikes, explosives can be very useful for triggering knockdowns to temporarily stun a machine. This strategy can be even more effective now that New Game Plus has arrived with the new Legacy's Reach Blastling, which has a built-in 25% knockdown power perk when fully upgraded. Loaded up with knockdown power coils, you'll be able to knock machines down very easily. If you want to learn more about all the new legendary weapons in New Game Plus, I'll link my video on them down below. Rope casters are one of the few weapon categories that are actually very simple for me to recommend coils for. On a regular rope caster, it's best to use draw speed coils to decrease the amount of time it takes to fully draw and trigger the overdraw mechanic. Unlike in Zero Dawn, where we could attach ropes easily anywhere on a machine, in Forbidden West, machine armor will prevent a rope from attaching. However, overdrawing your rope caster shot will allow you to penetrate armor and attach a rope anywhere, so it's important to be able to overdraw your rope caster quickly. Loading it up with draw speed coils is the best way to do that. Now, if you like using the new canister rope casters, then your coils should focus on boosting your favorite element, for example, frost, with the corresponding elemental coil. Finally, we have trip casters, and the coil recommendations here depend on which types of trip wires you like to use. Personally, I don't use trip casters, but I do think the most useful trip wires are shock. So on the perimeter or the new All Mother's Blessing, I would definitely load up a bunch of shock coils. If you like using explosive wires on something like the Tinker's Pride, then explosive damage coils make a lot of sense. However, I'm more intrigued by stagger beams, which can actually deal significant amount of damage when coiled with damage over time coils. Okay, so let's quickly go through all the coils I'm using on my endgame loadout right now. On my Tears of the Land God, I have four components air coils, one 25% and three 15%. I also have a single 15% overdraw damage coil. I transitioned this set over from my Death Seeker, and as soon as I get another purple component tear and overdraw damage coil, I'll be swapping those in to replace a couple of the blue component tears. The Sun Scourge, which I use as my primary frost weapon, is simply loaded with five 15% frost coils. On the Forge Fall, I have three critical hit chance coils and two long range damage coils. As soon as I get Ear of's Downfall upgraded, these coils will get moved over to it. As we discussed earlier, my Blast Forge Bolt Blaster has four impact damage coils and a single 25% reload speed coil. Those might transition over to the new Brawl Breaker once I get it upgraded. My Elite Rope Caster is loaded up with draw speed coils. I just need to grab another purple version to replace this blue one as I continue to play through New Game Plus. And finally, my Ancestor's Return is loaded with three agility coils and two damage over time coils. Once I get a few more 15% agility coils, I'll probably go full agility on this one to boost the tear and build up stats further. Alright guys, those are all my coil recommendations for every weapon type in the game. Remember, if you want to know where to find all these coils, make sure to watch my coil locations video linked below and here on screen. I'm sure some of you have other ways you like to coil your weapons as well, so if you want to chat about that, definitely leave me a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, leaving a like really does help. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.